You know, over the past couple of years, my house has changed significantly. My house was built in 1945. It had the original metal awning so along the outside of it. I took all of that down myself. I changed up the front porch. I had a design, I had a concept. I was able to get some help through a contractor to kind of help execute all of this. I did some DIYs. It was a little mix of everything. And not only did I change my front porch, but I also changed the back deck. And I thought it would be fun to pull together kind of a compilation video of what my house looked like at the very beginning, which is just like this, and to what it looks like now. I am so happy and so thrilled with it, and this is a compilation video of that transformation. Enjoy. Everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy, and I'm back. I've got a DIY video for you today on steroids because the exterior renovations of my house are complete including the pergola i'm so excited to share this diy project with you today this was a hard one this was definitely um some sweat equity and a lot of uh you know favors from friends and i was able to do it for about fifteen hundred dollars and i'm super super excited and very grateful about that because it uh needed to be done within that that price point um the video today is going to actually share with you the whole process we're going to go with uh taking down the awnings on my house my house was built in 1945 and it had original metal awnings all across the front and a huge metal awning around the front porch it really changed everything about my house um we took down the awnings we put up shutters um, there's a little bit of process involved with that because um, they were harder to install than you might think. The awning around the front porch was a booger bear to pull down and uh, literally had to beat it away from the uh, house at some points. And then uh, finally, the pergola and getting that done. You'll see that it's unfinished wood right now because unfortunately we have to paint it. And uh, I can't paint it until like three months of it curing in the weather because it's pressure treated lumber. And uh, that's going to mean it's in December here in Georgia, which is not going to be conducive to painting. So I'm probably going to have to wait until like March or April to paint it. But I had to share it with you today. And of course, I decorated my porch for fall and I decorated the pergola already. So you're just going to have to see it all in this video. Um, if you are one of my long term subscribers, I call you guys my OGs. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you guys. And I know that some of you have even gone through this journey with me on Instagram. I'm excited to finally share the finished product with you. If you're brand new to the channel, I tend to do some small little home renos here and there. I'm a first time homeowner. And so this was my chance to kind of explore and to, you know, push the boundaries a little bit for myself personally. And uh, I think it proves that a lot of us can kind of do things when, uh, you know, we don't think we can. If you are brand new to the channel, maybe this is even your first video because YouTube recommended it to you. Thank you, YouTube. And uh, I hope that you'll consider sticking around and hanging out with us. So here is the DIY video. I'm really, really excited about it. Hey guys, guess what? It is awning removal day. All right, you guys. So I am outside of my house and uh, it's awning removal day. Um, we are going to be removing that awning and we're also going to be removing this awning. Now, as I mentioned, my house was built in 1945 and while the inside has been modernized, the outside needed a little bit of help. So we were gonna start with removing the awnings. Initially, we decided that we would remove the first two smaller awnings and then work on the larger one. The first one came off really, really easily. We actually just removed the screws on either side of the brackets down below, and this enabled us to lay those awnings perfectly flat against the window. Um, there were about five or six screws here at the top. There was one that was a little tough to get out, and I couldn't get it out with just a regular screwdriver. So my friend Paula and her badass self jumped on top of that ladder with her screwdriver, and we were able to remove that last screw. And eventually everything came out and both awnings were down on the ground. Now removing those awnings definitely made the house look so different already, but because those awnings were screwed directly into the siding of the home, I did have to go through and repair some of those small holes. We definitely don't want any water leaking through those. And you can see that there was also just some discoloration just from dirt and grime. 
but with a power washer, we're able to get all of those off. This is a sneak peek at the midnight blue shutters that I'm going to be putting on the house. I love these so much. For those holes, all I did was fill it in with some caulking. I used some waterproof caulking, and uh, it was literally as easy as that. It was kind of the same color as the siding of the house, which actually worked out really well, and you can barely see where this was repaired. Any other pieces that were pretty large, I just used a vinyl repair kit and just covered all of those holes up with that, and we were right in business to start hanging those awnings. I think because the window awnings were so easy, we're going to go ahead and try and take the porch awnings off next. Um, they look a little more complicated, but we'll see. <laughs> now, unfortunately, the porch awning became a little bit more challenging. Okay, actually, it was a lot more challenging. You can see that the awning is wrapped around the porch on three different sides. And as you get to each one of these corners, those corners are joined by several screws. Several screws that were built probably or put in here in the 50s. And those screws have rusted and fallen apart and crumble. And some of them are actually in the tightest spaces that you cannot get to with any kind of tool or at least any kind of tool that we had on hand with us. So we literally just kept trying different sizes and trying different screwdrivers and poking around and trying anything that we could to get these screws off because literally every single screw with the exception of those corner pieces and it's that little little tiny one all the way down there in the bottom that was the hardest one to be able to remove and that screw was a consistent screw that was all the way around all of the corners of the awning so we knew we needed to figure out something as you can see here, the braces or the, the brackets that hold everything up were really easy to remove. Um, these were just some simple screws that came right out of that wood post. And again, uh, we knew that we would have to figure out something in order to get those awnings down. So we decided to go ahead and work our way from the top down. So very similar to the window awnings, all of these awnings have screws at the top. There were probably about 40 screws that were holding this awning onto the house itself. And so we just started working our way around, removing most of these screws, with the exception of the far left side and the far right side where the brackets were still maintained. We did that for safety and so everything wouldn't come crashing down around us. All right, so we've got one little set of screws that is holding the awning up still that is being such a pain in the butt and it's these that are right here on the corner and we have tried everything to get them loose and nothing is working so we're gonna take a break we're gonna get a turkey sandwich something to drink and um we'll go at it again but we're having to beat the hell out of it with a hammer and nothing is loosening these screws they're the worst that we've ever seen so more to come. When I say beat the hell out of these awnings, that is no exaggeration. I literally took a hammer and just started beating apart these metal awnings. They're um, kind of like a aluminum, I guess, and they came apart actually pretty easily with a couple good hits. Actually, it probably took about 50 good hits. And as you can see here, it did start to separate which was nice, and um, we were able to at least get those corners released. Then we could start taking apart the awning off of the top of the house itself. Obviously, we have to be careful with this because we can't damage the house itself, and uh, we're just trying our best to jiggle this loose, and eventually it does start to release, and it starts to pull apart from the house. It also starts to pull apart where it's still attached to the other awning, where the uh, separation didn't quite happen, and eventually it all came down. It was such a relief when this large piece in the front came down because it enabled us to be able to work towards the other pieces and get those down as well. I told you that one set of screws was really, really strong, and as you can see, it is still really strong, but look how good the house looks. So we jumped back up on the ladder, Paula again being a badass that she is. I was on the other side there jiggling and shaking and moving and tugging and pulling, and eventually that side came off as well.
You can already see how different the house looks with those awnings removed. Oh I really, really love it. There was this far awning on the right-hand side that still needed to be removed. This one was a little bit more trickier because it was actually bolted to the house on this side. So we did remove the awnings there and then went and bought some new siding to just replace this uh, space here of uh, missing siding. It was easy to do. We just covered up the hole that you see there and uh, the siding wasn't a perfect match, but it still looked really good and it was really, really close to the rest of the house. The shutters I picked up from Lowe's in Midnight Blue were fantastic. What I also liked about them is that on the back of each one of the shutters, there were some markings where you could pre-drill any of your holes. This made it easy to make sure that everything was super even when I was hanging these up on the house themselves. The shutters themselves actually proved to be a little bit more challenging than Paula and I expected. Um, the house is made of steel. I don't know what else to say. The shutters were really, really hard to hang. You would think that this would probably be the easiest part of the day. It definitely was not. My guess is, is that maybe it was a combination of just the house being strong and sturdy, which I'm not going to fault the house for at all. Thank you, house, for being a strong, strong house. <laughs> but uh, it also was probably a combo of just being very, very, very tired. We started the day about 9 a.m., and by this point, it was almost 7 o'clock in the evening, and we were just exhausted. So finally, with uh, using several different types of drills, we were able to get all of those shutters hung on those two windows. All right, so day one. Um... The awnings came down. We were originally just going to do the uh, bedroom and the living room windows. And uh, they came down so easy that we decided to take the front porch awnings down and we had a lot of trouble. The uh, corners of the awnings are held together by bolts and they were old and they were rusted and they would not come out and they were in a very, very tight area where we couldn't get in to get them out. So we ended up having to take a hammer <laughs> and actually beat them off of there and that finally worked. And then the, um, then that was pretty easy once we did that, but it was very, very physical to get that done. And then for putting the shutters up, we ran into, I guess around the window, there's probably some metal casing or something for the window itself. And um, that ended up being a monster to drill through. We could not get a drill through some of it. So on some of the shutters, I only have like three screws. Uh, we're gonna go back in and use some fatter screws that are um, a little shorter, and then I'm just gonna have to go with some touch-up paint. But holy crap, y'all. I have never, ever, ever worked so hard in my life, and I owe so much to my friend Paula. And uh, wow, it was a lot. It was definitely a lot, but it's done. Well, sort of. And now the pergola, I've actually decided to change it up a little bit too. We're not gonna be taking down the railings or the banisters around the front porch because I think those are important for people climbing up and down the steps. Um, but I am, so I'm gonna keep the front porch, the railings all around it and everything. And then I'm gonna do a sweet little pergola trim around the top and then, um, just paint everything and it's gonna all be white. I was originally gonna make it be wood, but I'm gonna paint it all white so it kind of looks like a little storybook house. And then I think I'm gonna do the front door yellow, but we'll see. So more tomorrow or another day, because I don't think I'm gonna be building anything tomorrow. <laughs> Those awnings are finally down. And this is what the house looks like with no awnings across the front porch and those shutters up. All right, it is finally pergola building day. This was about a month or so later. And uh, we went to Home Depot, picked up the two by eights and the two by twos. We grabbed five of these two by eights. They're gonna be used for the supports across the sides and the front, and then also an extra one. So we have some to build the points of the pergola. And then these are the two by twos that will go across the top of the pergola. I think that these are two by twos and two by eights. I'm not really even sure after the day that we had. Um, so the pergola itself is going to go across the front of the porch. 
The pergola sides will actually come off of the side of the porch and we want to make sure that this is nice and sturdy. This is the support beam that goes across the front of the porch and the largest drill bit ever. Don't you love this? That is so we can go directly through that support beam and then build these pieces here on either side. As you can see now, you can see what I was talking about with those pieces going all the way to the side of the house. They are being supported by those support poles that actually hold up the front porch. And what's great about this is that this is purely decorative and it does not affect the side of the house at all, which is great. Um, so you can kind of see from the street here how it's already starting to shape up. I love the way this is going to look, especially with those blue shutters. Now for those decorative pieces that were coming out, those were just a series of those two by eights that were cut down to the same shape as those end pieces. And then for the two by twos, we started putting those across the top of the pergola. We did five rows of those in total. And as you can see, it is really, really starting to shape up. For those actual support pieces themselves, those points that are coming out, um, I'm calling them support pieces. They're, again, decorative, so they're not really support pieces, but we did want to make sure that they were good and sturdy. So we did add some metal strapping to the tops of each one of those, and those do feed through the column, as you can see there, and then we are just screwing them right to the top of that post. And that post is great because it's super solid, it's sturdy, and we are going to actually cover up those strappings with some decorative wood trim that you're not even gonna see those. And then for the actual two by twos, you can see that we did run out of some of those. So we had to go to Home Depot to grab a few more of those in order to finish out the pergola. Now, once we did get all those final pieces put in place, you can see how the pergola looks now. I absolutely love the way this looks. I think it makes the front porch look extremely cute and very, very sweet. The wood is a pressure treated lumber, so I'm not going to be able to paint it for about three months is what's recommended. Unfortunately, that means that three months from now, we will be in December of 2020. And uh, as much as I want this year over, I'm not going to be able to paint in the winter time. So we do have to wait until the uh, springtime for this, so I'm probably not gonna be able to paint this white until March or April of 2021. But again, I love the way this looks. I think it is super decorative and check out the way the inside was finished off. All of that trim, everything is hidden. You can't see any of it. It looks nice and clean. It is super, super strong. It is decorative and it is going to make a huge impact on the outside of the house. Again, I love the way this looks. I'm super, super happy with it. This is a view from that street side again with that pergola completed. I love it so, so much. I think it's totally changed the inside and the outside of my house. It just feels different even being inside with all those awnings gone. The lighting I get, it is really, really incredible. I did go ahead and hang some decorative lighting on there because I needed to have some immediate gratification and I love the way this looks. And then of course, you know I had to decorate my porch for fall. And again, super, super cool. Very, very happy with the way this looks and I am in love with my house all over again. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a tour of everything I did here on my front porch, including some updates that you're seeing behind me. But before we get into that, I do of course have to say thank you to all of my subscribers. You guys know who you are. I appreciate you so, so much. If you're brand new to the channel, of course, welcome. But if you're one of my OGs, you know I have a special place in my heart for you guys. Also, if you're brand new, maybe even YouTube just recommended the video to you. Thank you, YouTube. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy my new front porch. I am so, so happy with it. All right, guys, let's get into that video. When I bought my house about three years ago, I knew that I was going to make some changes to the front. As much as I loved those awnings, I did want to remove those and update the exterior of my home a little bit. First thing I did was with my best friend, Paula, remove all of those awnings in the front. That was a tedious project. And uh, we also added shutters to the house. That surprisingly was even harder than I would have ever thought doing the awnings were. Now, if you'd like to see that process, I do have a video of all of that. The other thing that I did was when I removed the awnings around the front porch, I decided to add a pergola trim. Now the pergola trim is made out of pressure treated wood and this is what the house looks like prior to me doing the front porch renovations. Now, as you can see, the pergola has not been painted yet and it was time to go ahead and get that painted. 
I had to let it cure for at least three months out in the cold and the rain and the weather. And then winter came, so I decided as soon as springtime hit, it was time to get things moving. Now, I wanted to go ahead and do everything on the front porch, including cleaning it and literally painting everything from top to bottom. So the first thing I did was remove everything off of the porch. You know me, you know I love my front porch. Also, I wanted to update the ceiling. In the south, we have haint blue ceilings, which helps keep evil spirits away. I wanted haint blue, and I definitely wanted that eggplant door painted. I needed it to be personal and my own. So the first thing I did was also repair that concrete patch that you see there in the bottom corner. That uh, chip on the step had been bothering me for quite a while. Then I took a pressure washer and washed off the concrete. And as you can see, the porch was once green. I had no idea that my foundation or the porch was actually green on this house. But it was now going to be something totally different. Now for that ceiling, we are going to go ahead and fill in all of those cracks. That beadboard that you see up there is uh, definitely original to the house and I'm going to keep that, but we just wanted to clean that up a little bit. So we also kind of filled in with some spackle, some of that area, still keeping the integrity of the boards. And then we're gonna go through and clean up any of these trim pieces. As you can see here, we did some patches just on some of the knots in the wood, just to make sure that everything was nice and smooth and everything would look really, really good once it was painted. Any of those holes or anything that came with that wood imperfection, we did want to go ahead and take care of those. So that's kind of why you see that wood putty. Then also around the pergola trim, we just sealed up any of those holes or any of those cracks because when you do paint wood, it's going to show through. And I didn't want that to show through. I wanted it to look very smooth and easy. So the first thing we did was go ahead and take everything off the porch. And then we did a light coat on the porch. Now, this is just one coat on the railings and on the banister. And as you can see, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So we went ahead and went heavier with the second coat and then also with the third coat. And now you can see everything starting to really come together and start to look really, really nice. Now for the porch itself and that lovely door there in the background, that took a lot more work, but it was worth it because I love the way that everything is starting to turn out, the way that the color is really starting to blend in with the rest of the house. We taped off that ceiling fan so we could start painting the ceiling next. And we made sure that every little crack and crevice and cranny and everything else in between on the front porch was painted completely white, really, really updating the overall look. This is what it all looks like from the distance. And as you can see, it already is making a big impact on the way that that pergola trim, it totally updates the porch. And I love the way this looks. Now we painted the ceiling here that haint blue and I absolutely love it. Then for the concrete pad on the porch, I decided to go with something that was a little more bold. I wanted something that was going to pull in the blue from those shutters and I did take the shutters with me to Lowe's and paint or match the paint. And then the storm door. We added the storm door because in the living room I had that big picture window so I don't get a lot of ventilation. So that storm door is actually going to allow that. Now, as you can see, everything is dry. I started putting everything back together and you may see a bright yellow door peeking out there. Let's go take a closer look at the porch. As you can see, my plants are bold and beautiful as well as my porch. I love all of the colors on the front porch. This is a rug that I've had for a very long time. I've had this rug for many years. It's actually plastic and I got it on Amazon. The flowers, the trellis, the house numbers, everything matches with the blue. I've got my Cricut Miles established in 2018 sign there on the door and or on the wall and check out that door. That is a soft boiled egg color from Bear and I love it. And then last, those paisley pillows that really draw in all of the colors, not only from the door, but from the rug. I'm super happy. My fountain is going in the corner. I love the way this fountain is. It just spills over into the next level and creates the nicest sound whenever I'm sitting out on the front porch. My flower cart is just filled with all kinds of great flowers and some DIY projects that I've done. I love this little cart and I bought this on a company called LTD Commodities and I've had it for several years. It's starting to get a little rusty, but you know what? I think it adds a lot of really cool character. 
And as the sun sets, this is what my house looks like now. I am so happy with the way this turned out. I am in love, and I hope you are as well. Come have some tea on the front porch or some wine. Let's talk about the neighbors. <laughs> All right, you guys, now I know you're probably wondering how in the heck did he redo his entire front porch for zero dollars? Well, I'm gonna tell you, every time I do a shopping haul, I talk about an app called Fetch Rewards. And if you're familiar with Fetch Rewards, then you already know what I'm talking about. Fetch Rewards is an app that you can download, and every time you go shopping, all you do is scan your receipts, and then eventually you earn enough points from those scanned receipts that you can then redeem those points for gift cards. And I was able to use all of my receipts from all of my shopping halls and also for my referrals from people like you and I was able to redeem almost six hundred dollars worth of Amazon gift cards and that is what I did my entire front porch with so let's get started because the first thing we have to do is clear off all of this stuff and I gotta do it with the broken wing here this is my left arm by the way now, obviously, this footage is sped up, and as you can see, I'm using my one good arm, and I am using my left arm just a little bit here. Um, ironically enough, I was released from the splint the next day. I did not have to go into the cast as I was expecting to. My doctor was super, super happy with all the progress. I do have to kind of take it a little bit easier on this left arm for a little while, and we'll have to go through some physical therapy to regain the strength. I don't have a lot of strength in this arm right now. Now, I can't really lift anything other than about five pounds, which is kind of crazy. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of taking my time here and sweeping and cleaning off. And then I will spray and hose everything off. And then we will get started bringing in all of the new stuff. All right, you guys, now that I have the front porch all cleaned up, I wanted to go ahead and tell you what I was able to get with my Fetch Rewards gift cards. There's an airplane flying above, so hopefully you don't hear a lot of that, but uh, I was able to get quite a few things. Now, my furniture I'm gonna be keeping on my front porch, but I wanted to revamp it with a new rug. I wanted a new fountain. I wanted a new piece for the wall that's here behind me, and I also wanted some new pillows, and I was able to get all of that again with Fetch Rewards, and then I also had enough left over to get a new plant stand for the side of the porch here. Uh, typically I had this kind of rustic looking cart and unfortunately it is rusted to the point of no return. So I'm going to be replacing that with this plant stand. So now let's get started loading everything in here. <laughs> So the first thing I did was wrestle with this plastic on the rug. This rug was actually shipped in this plastic, which was great. It's super heavy duty plastic. The rug came in, it's in perfect condition. It was just a little challenging to get all of this plastic off. And I definitely said a few choice words because I, again, was trying to hold it with that left arm and, and cut this plastic off. but. Eventually, you see that I do get the plastic off, and what a gorgeous rug this is. I absolutely love the colors. It's got blue, it's got white, which are key colors on my front porch, and then, of course, those pops of yellow really bring in the front door color, which, again, I am totally obsessed with. Now, this part you guys are going to love. So I always have a very bad habit of taking my pillow covers and just covering whatever pillow I'm recovering. So I literally had to take three different pillow covers off of my outdoor pillows in order to get these new pillow covers on because they were just too thick at that point. And uh, trying to do this with one arm, by the way, or one and a half arms or one and three quarters arms is not easy. So yeah, you saw me at one point kind of use my teeth to help like pull some of that and <laughs> it was it was ridiculous and the voiceover of this the reason why I'm voicing this over is because it was ridiculous the grunts and the growls and the ow my arm hurts and ouch and ooch and owls it was just way too much so I had to just kind of dub this over and let you guys know but I love those pillow cases that I got or those pillow covers just kind of flattening them out right now and making sure but the white background of those pillows was all those pillow covers would have shown through so I had to cover these or, or uncover them to cover them if that makes sense. 
Now, I was also able to accessorize my front porch a little bit with this cute, adorable little bird that I picked up from Amazon and also this faux snake plant. I really loved the pops of color. I loved how the bird kind of blends in with the blues and, you know, the rug and everything. And again, these were all purchased with those fetch rewards. You may remember this DIY project that I had. This was a Goodwill find and a Goodwill flip. I'm going to include that and put it down on that lower level. Now, a lot of you may have vinyl siding like I do on my house, and you may remember I mentioned I was going to be hanging something kind of in this white space behind me. You can find vinyl siding hooks on Amazon, and these are great because all they do is slip right into the vinyl siding, and they have different weight limits. This is only like a five pound weight limit, but it's going to be perfect for the uh, metal piece that I'm going to be hanging on the wall there behind me. So let's just go ahead and install it because it's really, really, really easy. Told you it was easy. And then we're gonna be doing this blue release sunshine. That way. Move it over just a little bit. And boom. Now, my little front porch oasis here is almost done. I did add that yellow blanket that I also did get from Amazon with those fetch reward points. This is the fountain I was telling you about. I absolutely love this fountain and I love the sound of it. It is so peaceful and it actually has a very cool LED light right at the top of it. So it creates a very cool shadow on the ceiling when it's nighttime. Now, the only thing that I'm missing right now is some plants. So I did go to Home Depot and I grabbed a cart full of some different things. And I came home and tried to plant some of this. I did have a friend help me. Um, my Mr. Disco Ball there is all decked out and ready to go. That did come from Amazon also. And then for the hanging baskets on either side of my steps, I added these yellow flowers. And then for the step itself, I wanted something white and very simple. And then I added this great palm tree instead of that plant stand that I mentioned earlier. And this is what my new peaceful front porch looks like. I am in love with this. I love the way it looks. And I think even this little guy is really loving it also. to be showing you everything I did to my backyard deck to make it my own private oasis. I am looking forward to summer and friends and hanging out on the back porch and I want you to join me. But before we get into that, of course, I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. If YouTube happened to recommend this video to you and you're not a subscriber yet, maybe you'll consider joining in the fun. If you're a short-termer, long-termer, or even one of my OGs, thank you guys so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. All right, let's get into that video, wherever it is. That way, that way, that way. Pollen season in Georgia is finally over and I decided to finally put my deck back together. Now, my deck, um, I do need to eventually probably replace this or repaint it or restain it or kind of all of the above. But for right now, we're just going to be doing some really some decorative touches and we're going to clean it up a little bit. As you can see, my deck kind of is multi-purpose. It is my spray paint station for all of the DIYs that I'm doing for you guys. And, uh, you know, it's it's not quite as nice as it once was. And it's just kind of uh, even my even my barbecue grill is depressed. My little charcoal grill, like it's just sitting there on that metal table that I've had out there. And, uh, you know, uh, things just need some love. They just need some revitalization. And uh, I'm going to add some new things out there as well and freshen up some of the old things. I'm a creature of habit. I tend to buy um, a lot of the same things over and over. And I actually did buy a couple things for this deck 
again when I'm doing kind of this uh, this freshening up. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean it up. And uh, this took a lot more than that Dollar Tree broom. I will say that right now. Um, this had, uh, you know, some staining on it and some dirt and whatnot and I swept it off as well as I could and then I did not film this part because I was saying lots of bad words but I did take my hose out and a scrubber and literally just started scrubbing this down and cleaning it up as good as I could get it and uh, I was pretty happy with it afterwards and I also uh, got rid of the spray paint station but speaking of spray paint, I did decide to go ahead and spray paint that table that I had. I don't know if you noticed or not, but it was this kind of a greenish color table. And I thought that it would look great in my favorite color, navy blue, because I'm going to be switching up some things that are up on the porch. So I brought out some of my navy blue gloss paint and just started spray painting this table. It took a couple coats and did it on a couple sides. I added this green AstroTurf carpet. This is actually one of the items that I told you about that I did rebuy. Um, I had this uh, when I first originally moved into the house. I loved it so, so much. It's super comfortable. It's very soft on the feet and it does not hold water which was also very good because I didn't have to worry about any kind of pooling or anything and then I have my umbrella stand that was left over the new item that I grabbed and this is part of the reason why I also painted my table that blue color that you see in the back there is I've got a new rocking chair for the back deck the previous chair I had out here was a navy blue wicker chair and this is a rocker that I ended up getting on Amazon. I will link this below because this is a fantastic deal. It was $109 and I absolutely love the way this looks. It's kind of like a brown faux rattan with a metal frame. It comes with those gorgeous lime green cushions and this does come in a couple different colors. It comes with all the tools that you need. It's just a simple Allen wrench and it's about eight screws, I think, all together. And um, it was not that hard to do. Probably the worst thing about assembling this was being out in the hot sun because it was not fun. And uh, it was very muggy in Georgia lately. But as you can see, the chair is put together. It turned out really, really nicely. And uh, I love the way it pops next to that blue chair and that blue table. Uh, speaking of tables, this is a kind of a outdoor table that I've had for a while. Friends of mine gave me this when I moved into the house. What's great about my deck is that you'll notice there it has that built-in seating around it. So it's really good because it, uh, you know, I, I don't have to have a whole lot of chairs out here, but I do have a lot of seating. So I have these navy blue chairs that I picked up from Home Depot a couple years ago. They were still in great condition and the color matches the other pieces of navy that I have on here. I love putting them on this side of the table and then other people can sit on the bench side of the table and there's plenty of room to get around it on either side. It's actually really, really comfortable and uh, makes for a really nice seating area and um, there's still plenty of room to walk around on all sides you can get to the other side of the deck and go down the stairs with no interruptions in the flow at all now that I had the table all set up, I needed to add an umbrella, and I found this great umbrella actually three years ago, and I was lucky enough to be able to find a newer one on Amazon. The previous one I had for three years, it sat out in the weather, it faded, it was time to get a new one, so I a creature of habit, bought the same exact color and super, super happy with it. And then I found these fantastic pillow covers. These are outdoor pillow covers from Amazon. And I just grabbed my inserts from the previous pillows that were out there and uh, literally just kind of restuffed those outdoor pillows the covers and uh, I have some gorgeous pillows for the table outside and for comfort against your back. I love the way that everything looks. And now we need to bring in a little more color on the table. Now, I want to show you one thing that I did. I took the Dollar Tree um, triple planter and I actually cut a hole in the bottom of it using my glue gun. Typically, I stick this through the umbrella, but I'm going to give this a nice coat of paint and brighten it up to make it match the rest of the porch. Now, I'm painting it this lime green color to match the cushions and everything. And I know that I said I used my 
glue gun to cut the hole in that. I did not use my glue gun. I used my wood burning tool. But now you can see it is that gorgeous lime green that matches with the cushions and the chair and everything. And then for filling this up, you could do a lot of different things with this, really. You could put condiments in it. I'm putting some Dollar Tree wood pieces in it and some candles. But then you'll see that I ended up actually switching it up and putting some plants in it. And I just put some plants that were inside some galvanized uh, metal pots and then just put them inside those three sections because you know with the umbrella being in there you can't really put dirt in there because you may have to take this off or or on and if you have dirt in there it's just going to become a, kind of a mess but there's so many really cool options in this you could put bottles of wine in it if you have friends over everybody could get a bottle of wine you know there's so many different variations and fun things that you can do with this this is such a great idea i highly recommend recommend you do this if you have a patio outside and an umbrella on your table. Now this DIY was actually featured in a previous video. All I did was take some fence posts that were actually given to me from a friend. I simply nailed a wood base on the bottom of them, just those flat little planks that you see there at the very bottom, just to help stabilize everything. And then I painted them this bright, gorgeous green. I took a drill bit and drilled out the top of them. That way they would hold a tea light and they make the perfect outdoor candlesticks. Now, while I was filming everything, and doing everything outside, I ended up getting some friend mail from my friend Stacy, and she sent me a belated birthday present, and she made the most beautiful hummingbird feeder and sent me this gorgeous little cute unicorn inflatable drink holder as well, which I will be using in the pool. But to check this bottle out, how perfect was this timing because this is absolutely beautiful. This is a handmade hummingbird feeder that she makes. And I mean, did she know like blue was my favorite color? Obviously she did. But how gorgeous is the beading and the copper wiring and everything? And this is going to hang perfectly off the deck. Now, I have these Dollar Tree planters that I've had for quite a while. These oversized planters, which I loved. And a very uh, dirty backyard where I just kind of flung everything off the deck. And uh, now I added some gorgeous plants there. I also took these tea light holders that I featured in a previous video and just put those outside. Now, I've got this repurposed salad bowl. This is a wood salad bowl that I turned into a planter. And now I've got these great candle holders as well that have tea light candles in them, by the way. Now I have this expandable trellis. And I know you guys probably saw this on Instagram. I bought two of these. I will link these in the description box below. I absolutely love these. They are super, super versatile. And uh, even Mr. Otis is approving everything. He's looking at me like, why can't I be outside with you, dad? All right, everybody, this is the final final tour of everything. This is how everything came together. I am super, super, super happy with my little oasis here. I love the way that everything looks. Those lights up there are the gutters. They were there before. And again, just really love how cozy. Those are the flowers that I was telling you about that I did. Now I've got room on this little kind of bar station here where I can put food or a bar or bottle of wine anything and it is just the coziest little oasis and I really really am so happy with the way that this turned out. I've got that gorgeous ivy effect there without having the maintenance and all the intrusion that ivy can really do and I am just in love with the way that my back deck looks right now.